She has made a name for herself in the world of makeup. What drives me as Tara is, I think that my, my business is a vehicle that God is using to change lives. And, and so I, I have that understanding of it and, and I'm constantly working to ensure that I'm, I am living it to the fullest. She also established a cosmetic school in Nigeria. So I wanted the makeup to be a tool, the products to be a tool to empower people. This week on African Voices, meet Tara Fela Duratoye, a Nigerian entrepreneur and makeup artist. Farafella Duratoye was born in 1977 in Nigeria's former capital, Lagos. I was raised by a stepmother, two stepmothers actually. Uh, my parents separated when I was very young uh, and divorced subsequently. But I think that experience gave me a lot of insight about all kinds of things and, and I think has shaped who I've become today. But I'm proudly so. Uh, my father was a historian. He worked uh, for the civil service. He was one of those fathers that was very committed to his children and every child was very important to him so we all had nicknames um, and he would call us according to our nicknames so um, very fond I was very fond of him for my childhood my secondary school was the greatest time it was then I found my faith in God first day in school I love those memories um, the memories of of growing up and and learning leadership and understanding the role of influence and having a voice um, I was very passionate about uh, starting up a fellowship in the school where students would come and learn and, and I could, we could teach the Bible studies. I learned about friendships as well and, and the things that it takes, what it takes to grow relationships and friendships. Some of those friends I still have till, till now. So secondary school was great. Um, I was also raised by a very loving stepmother. You know, a lot of people have the horrid stories about stepmothers. I think in my case I was very lucky uh, because I had an amazing stepmother who was very, very passionate about me, very passionate about raising me up to be a good wife, very passionate about raising me up to be a responsible person. Um, she insisted on teaching me all the different things, how to bake, how to cook. So many of the, my cooking skills I, I, I learned from her. I think I was very blessed to have had her and had access to such a beautiful woman who loved to travel. And she was the one who gave me the passion for cosmetics and beauty and fashion because she was extremely pas fashionable. Uh, liked to look beautiful. She was always in the salon every weekend having her nail polish done. Sometimes I had to sit down as a little girl and polish her toenails as well. Um, so I saw the power of cosmetics and I think that that's where the first interest for beauty and cosmetics came, came about. By the time I got into university, I, I become conversant with, uh, with um, what makeup actually does to a woman, you know, in terms of self-esteem, in terms of self-confidence. Duratoya studied law at the Lagos State University and wanted to become a lawyer. In my time there, my friends would say to me, I like the way you do your makeup. Can you do mine as well? And, and that's where the, the first time that I realized that, that I could actually do makeup for someone and, and I liked the way they responded and I liked the way they looked after I was done. And a friend of mine just asked me, why don't you start this as a business? And I thought, what? You know, do you, is everything business? You know? Uh, but I'm glad I took the, the, the first opportunity I, I had, the daughter of the of the chief of naval staff. Um, and at the time, Nigeria was a military government uh, administration, so it meant that the chief of naval staff was number three man in the country. Um, and so I, I did her makeup for her wedding. She was super excited. Um, I bought my kits for $100. What's the equivalent of $100 at the time? Um, she was a new, young, she just graduated from university, so her entire bridal train was maybe 12 ladies who were all fresh graduates. Many of them were going to get married after that season. And I had my first set of clients who were saying to me, well, I love the way my friend look on her wedding day and I'd like you to do my makeup. Dura Toye officially started her cosmetics company called House of Tara in 1998 while still a student. The time I was leaving university, I was already a well-known name and a well-known brand. Actually, my first store was built while I was on campus. Graduating from university, the young entrepreneur continued to grow her business. Her store focused on bridal makeup for weddings. I remember the first studio that we had and standing uh, and waiting for the man to set up the signage. And the minute he put up the signage, 
I wasn't looking, I didn't see. So I was just having a conversation with my husband and I suddenly turned back and the signage was up. And I recall having tears in my eyes. And tears in my eyes for different reasons. It was a joy of having a goal for finally fulfilled. It was the excitement of just saying to yourself, wow, I did it. And I think that mixed feeling just made me, pulled me to tears. When you use these dark colors, it comes, it makes your eyes really look dark. Mm -hmm. And there are times you may just want to, a little pop. Mm -hmm. And you can highlight this, just this like corner that, pieces yeah. with something bright. Mm -hmm. So I would say you could take something like, you could use this. Yeah. Yeah, you could use that, yes. Or you could use like a silver. Yeah, but when you mix it, thinking. yeah, but when you mix it, the silver doesn't come out so strong. It's, it, um, it, it disappears. But just to sort of bring your eyes out a little bit more. This yeah. is not like, I do my makeup based so that you, on what, and what they taught you. Mm -hmm. So I was talking about that. Okay. Just sort of bringing in, so just to make it pop out a little bit. So you'll be up and down as well. I need to use a brush to do that. Mm. I, I can see the colors. Though. Yeah. Duratoya's bridal service was a success, but it was her knowledge of makeup techniques that would lead her to her next venture. I like this. You see the. More than a decade after Nigerian beauty entrepreneur Tara Fela Duratoya had established her makeup company, House of Tara, she was gaining more and more recognition for her work. I remember getting receiving a DHL from, uh, from uh, Switzerland. Um, and it was unusual to get a DHL from Switzerland. And I opened it and it was a letter from uh, the Queen of Jordan uh, saying that I had, she was on a committee for the World Economic Forum and I had been nominated uh, from Nigeria as a young global leader uh, in 2013. It was beginning of the year, it was a very exciting period. I, I, I didn't even know how to respond to it. Uh, but I think being recognized by the world at a world, at a, at a world, world stage or world level that you're making an impact for me, I think it's phenomenal. Duratoya received another award in 2013 when Forbes listed her as one of 20 young power women in Africa. Um, Forbes listing me was great. It was fantastic. It was awesome. Being on that list, um, yes, may have uh, put some credence to what I've already started to do. But Forbes identifying and saying, okay, this is one of the most powerful women to look out for in this generation also puts a burden on me to say I need to raise the next generation of leaders as well who are women. And so um, I created my own mentorship program where people have access to me, whether they are rich or poor, but they have something that they're doing. And I, and I spend my time to invest in, in developing them and developing them, but asking them, this development and this mentorship that I'm sharing with you is to an intent. And the intent is for leadership, is for you to use your leadership, your influence, your power to make an impact. And so it's not enough for Tara to be on the list, Forbes list. It's more important that Tara is changing lives. And for me, I need to share that with also the next generation so that the same orientation I have is what I'm also sharing down the line. Like I say to my mentees, it's not enough for me to give my time. It's not sufficient for you to be excited about the access you have to me. But I think it becomes um, also your responsibility to also give back. And so I'm encouraging them all the time to do the same. I think that it should become a culture for us as women to also develop other women. Uh, we hear of men who sponsor other men. And in sponsorship, many times it's about really mentorship and opening doors for them. And that's what I do with my mentees, is opening doors for them as well as much as I can, encouraging them to put their best foot forward. Many of them are really bright people, but sometimes they don't even know, they just need someone to tell them. And sometimes they go through a hard time and it's my responsibility to be a shoulder for them to cry on and to, and, and to seek help from. And so I've also charged each one of them to say that Nigeria needs you and Africa needs all of you. Duratoya's success with House of Tara led to a deal with a global cosmetics company early in 2014. 
L'Oreal came to us and, um, and asked us to, um, to be their partners in Nigeria to help in the retailing and distribution of their product, Maybelline. Um, I was super excited. Someone laughed and said on the day that the vice president came to visit, um, someone described it as it seemed like it was my wedding day. So of course it was yet another milestone for us as a business, but also a recognition of our effort and the work that we've done over the years was now being recognized by a huge company like L'Oreal. Duratoya has always been a confident public speaker and now as a successful businesswoman often gives motivational talks. And now we're going off to a speaking engagement that I have. Um, I've become one, I've become a, a what you call a, a, a favorite uh, speaker. Um, just to share on enterprise and sometimes just share on motivating people on how to achieve their purpose uh, and, and their goals. And so today I'm going to speak to some young people about um, wealth from nothing. How do you create wealth from nothing? So I look forward to it. It's always a nice experience to be able to share with your knowledge and leave them knowing that you've impacted some lives because the same way I have also been impacted um, by multiple speakers that I've had the opportunity uh, to listen to. I generally get invited um, to speak in different places, uh, conferences, youth empowerment programs and I think that uh, because a lot of people know my story and many of them are, are it's, it's a story that they can, they can relate with um, and so many of these platforms want me to share how I started the business. As I said, is sharing my own story, the story that I know. I can't share any other story, right? This is the one that I know the inner, inner of the story. And wealth for me is, I think, started with a mindset. And I'll say, when I say mindset is, I am a wealthy person in my mind. It's not about what I have in the bank. It's not about what I have in my purse. I have not always had a lot of cash. There are certain things that are telling you that you cannot make it that you will not make it, that Nigeria is not a place where people make it, that Nigeria is not a fruitful ground. I beg to differ. I started this business with 15,000 Naira. 15,000 Naira. Every month we pay over 100 people's salary. And House of Tara has never owed salary one month. People who want to go into the beauty industry, I say it's really about passion, first of all. Uh, you've got to be passionate about it. It mustn't be because you're trying to make money out of it. Uh, you will make money out of it if you're working hard, you apply yourself. But you first of all have to know that it's something you're passionate about. It's not because Tara did it. It's not because this person did that or that person did it. It's simply because this is what you love to do. And being in this place is, what is where you like to be. I love my life. I love where I am. I'm certain I'm doing the right thing at this moment. There is nothing as fulfilling as knowing that you're in the right place at the right time. I think my greatest fear today is not enjoying the journey to the destination. I know for a fact I'm certain of where I'm going. I'm certain I'm going to get there. I'm very confident. I can see the picture. Um, I can tell that I'm going to achieve my dream. If it's that I'm going to build House of Tower to become a global enterprise um, of African origin, I am certain that House of Tower will be that. But my fear is that Tara may not enjoy this journey the, air, the things that she's doing every day to get to that destination. So I wake up one day and I'm 70 and I've really achieved my vision. But then I almost don't remember what it was like going through those seasons because I was rushing through them. My prayer is that I'll be able to look at every day, smell the rain, uh, touch the flowers, be aware of the people around me who are contributing and helping to make, to make my dreams come true. Recognize their face, remember their voice. So enjoy the moment on my journey to where I'm going as opposed to just rushing through it.